What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Um, pretty excited about this one. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I had a big morning and um, picked up my block and my wheels. So there is a wheel video coming soon, stay tuned for that. Um, but for this one, I wanna dive into the block. Um, it has been a few months. Um, I'm super excited to get it back. Feels like a bit of progress um, is happening on the car. Um, so like I said, the block did go away to get a Kool-Aid Engineering block brace kit. Um, Kool-Aid Engineering are here in Australia. Um, they're semi-local to me in Brisbane, so they did all the work. Um, does look like a top-notch kit. I am pretty happy with it. Um, obviously comes with all the hardware, seals, but they do need the block to obviously do the machining. Um, they don't machine much off. They just assemble it. with the rear main seal and the oil pump. And they sit it all together and they mill the tiniest amount, however much of a thousand of an inch off the, off the top, just to make sure it's a level surface, surface for their billet main caps. Um, so these will go on and they will replace the factory girdle. You might remember in the parts video, I said I bought some new head studs. So I'll open them up now. So now the idea being that these will screw in there the whole way through. Billet main caps have dowels on the bottom so they're located and is a firm fit. So that'll go down and then the brace will go on. Um, so this is probably about 10 mil thick, quite strong and obviously gonna tie it all together. Only the oil pickup has to be drilled with a 16 mil drill bit, but that will all go on there and obviously tie the block into the crank, etc. Um, when it's all assembled, it will look like this. So, big shout out to Michael at Kulig Engineering for that. So I'm super excited. Um, I basically, I just wanted to run through this with you guys. I'll pack everything up. I do have to grab some of my parts, my crank, my pistons, my rods, etc. And I'm going to drop it off to the engine builder because now this needs to get tunnel board. Once it's tunnel board, the motor will get assembled. So that is super exciting. I'm excited to get this back. See what it all looks like together and obviously get it back in the car. I'm missing this car so much and I just want to drive it, but I suppose it's been fun uh, working on it along the way, learning new things um, and obviously now bringing you guys with it. So that's pretty exciting as well. But I want to talk about my gearbox. This is a stock R32 GTI gearbox. Um, it's done well so far. 500 and 700 horsepower for a little while. Um, still seems quite healthy. But going back together, knowing I want to turn it up and start using this car uh, a lot more and having some track days and having some fun, a bit of spirited driving, I don't think it's going to last. So, done a bit of research. I mean, sequentials and all that stuff would be nice, but just the price tag, I can't justify at the moment. So I have looked into a PAR set. So I have contacted PAR, P-A-R, um, again here in Australia. Um, but I believe they're down in Sydney. They can fit their engineered gear set to this, um, still keeping the street drivability that I'd like um, without being too noisy as a dog box or anything like that. Um, so I think I'm gonna go down that route. It's half or a third the price of a sequential um, and I think good for about a thousand new meters of torque. So what's that, like 1100, 1200 horsepower, however much, etc. So. Um, for the most part, I think that'll do me just fine. It'll be stronger than what I need. So, like I said, the idea was to build this car or rebuild this car, make good power for 10 years or so to time and only have to service it. So, block brace, etc. Try and save the block and keep the motor together for as long as possible. Um, get a par set in the gearbox and be able to keep the gearbox together for as long as possible and just service and maintain this car and enjoy it for what it's built for. So that is my plan. Um, so I need to remove the transfer case off the back. 
Um, I've never done it before. I have played with RB25 gearboxes before, but never a 26 box. Um, this part looking like the gearbox, and obviously this is the transfer. I'm guessing there's some sort of shifter linkage inside here. So I'm going to get this off and crack all the bolts. I don't believe there's a gasket. It sort of looks like it's factory good, and hopefully we'll be able to separate the transfer case. Let's get in. Now, it looks like all the big bolts going through are 14 mil, and perhaps there's a lot of 12 or 13 mils holding maybe just the transfer cases together before it goes onto the box. So, there's a 14 mil here, and there's also a 12. So I might take the 14 out and see if it sort of wants to get loose and go from there, but, um, Maybe I don't have to take off any sort of linkage. If it comes loose, I might be able to lift the transfer case off the, um, the shifter, but we'll have a look. All right, seems to be coming off now. Um, so all I've taken out is all the 14 mils around both ways of the gearbox and transfer. Dead blow hammer, a piece of piece of wood, um, just giving it a solid hit, and it's broken that sealer. So I'll see if there's anything else holding it on. I'll remove the breathers; they can come off with the transfer, and they can stay here in the garage. And um, we'll see if we can lift this down. Yeah. All right. So this is in the way. The selector shaft. The selector shaft is in the way. So we need to get that out, and then it should slide straight off. So this is the selector fork. Obviously there's the H pattern. And if I pull this back into gear, so there, there's two roll pins. There's a roll pin inside a roll pin just there. Um, and that is what I'm trying to get out now. If I had a center punch, obviously it'd be perfect, but I don't have a center punch, so I've got like a stainless rivet that I'm hoping I can hold and sort of be able to knock that through just enough um, that I can release this and be able to still grab the pin. So I'll give that a go now. I've got a magnet just in case the pin wants to fall because I don't know how much it's got left. Let's put that on there. So the first roll pin's coming out. Um, so basically, got a roll pin and then another roll pin inside it, obviously keeping it so tight that the uh, selector shaft doesn't come off. 
So the center's coming out at the moment, and then perhaps the other one will tap out a lot easier. But we'll keep having a go. Like I said, if you've got a punch, um, obviously this would be so much easier, but I don't. First one's come out, and the magnet caught it. Highly recommend using a magnet. Like I said, I don't know what's in the bottom. I don't know if I'll have full access. Once we get an apartment, we might be able to see. Um, and if it did fall through, we might have been able to get it out, but I'm not going to take that risk right now. Try and knock out the next one. Once again, magnet saved the day. I've never done this before. I would recommend the magnet. So now that the, the pins are out, I'm gonna gently lever this and try and bring this back a little bit. Um, so I've left it in gear, just trying to make it a bit more rigid. Um, and I'm gonna gently try and get maybe on this bolt and apply a little bit of pressure and just try and wiggle this off side to side that was easy hmm out of gear into third, comes right off. Things you learn. All right, Let's see if we can wiggle this straight off and under the ground. So, off. Um, Pretty straightforward, I suppose, now I know what I'm doing. Um, all the 14 mil bolts around the outside, the two pins were probably the hardest. Um, but, I mean, if I had a punch, I could have probably just knocked them out, but definitely use a magnet. Because um, obviously the transfer is sealed. Um, and it would have been fun trying to get them out of there if they fell down if they fell down inside. But for the most part, pretty simple job. Um, I mean, if I ever had to do it again, I know exactly what I'm doing now. So pretty happy about that. But yeah, all 14 bolts, if you got a punch, I mean, you could probably do this whole thing on the ground with basic tools at home. Obviously drop all the oil and fluids before you do it. Drain the Alteza pump. Um, my oil is looking a bit green and thick. Maybe it's the oil that the previous owner or someone put in it, but um, that'll all get cleaned out and I'll put fresh gearbox oil in it um, obviously when it all goes back together but um, I'll put the transfer back over under the bench um, I'll wrap the gearbox up obviously I'll have to take that to work and we'll put it on a pallet and mail it off to Sydney but that's a quick update on what I'm doing with my gearbox and my block um, so super excited thanks for watching see you in the next one